Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 14th. Right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Frontal system moves through this morning. It's bringing some thunderstorm activity, some prolific lightning producing storms across eastern portions of Oregon. Some of those creeping up into Washington at times. But as this system moves through, it's going to kick off a convergence zone as we go through this afternoon and evening across some of the Puget Sound region. They're mainly up towards the Snohomish King County border. Then we're going to dry things out and even turn things offshore. So that's going to reintroduce some forest fire smoke back across portions west of the Cascades, especially southwest BC and western Washington. Another system will swing through, cool us down. And then we've got some active look to our extended forecast as well. We'll dive into some of those details as we go through the video here this morning. So this is where we are right now. Again, some pretty prolific lightning producing storms moving across eastern Oregon. Can't roll out a rumble of thunder eastern Washington. Some of this just now creeping into southwest Washington. But I scroll back and forth. I got the radar overlaid on this. And you can see there was some light rain for the Washington coast, heavier across portions of the Oregon coast and more thunderstorm activity. And that portion of the frontal system really weakening, not bringing much in the way of precipitation to Olympia, Tacoma, Seattle, Everett, all the way up towards Bellingham this morning. Just a little bit of light rain maybe as we go through the day today. Now, if you want your own affordable home weather station, it just happens to pick up when it starts raining at your house. Got a lightning detection system. You can see the smartphone app has a Doppler radar overlaid. It builds a forecast for you. Stores the down for data for you in the cloud fun stuff click on the link down below it helps support the channel lightning strikes last 24 hours this should make sense with what we just looked at and now taking a look at the high resolution rapid refresh so you see things are basically cascades east and not too bad unless you're near one of these fires across bc or some eastern washington but as we scroll through the day today you see the flare up from the wildcat sugarloaf fire even the tunnel fire and the bear goats fire still producing some smoke i could see that hanging around the olympic mountains there yesterday Still some fires across Northeast Washington and British Columbia as well. But now this is going to give away what's coming up here because look at the shift in the wind there. It starts to bring that smoke back west of the Cascades. Hopefully not a lot of that is getting down towards the surface, but there it is. And that wind is likely coming and it's going to be pretty gusty for some areas, especially in the gaps, the Cascades, Stampede Gap, Columbia River Gorge is going to get windy here as well. Some gusts could exceed 50 miles per hour for some isolated locations. And just a reminder here that if you want to do the online weather spotter talk here, become a weather spotter, you know, scan this here and then click. And this is from Missoula National Weather Service, but you don't have to live in that region to go ahead and gain the benefits of these talks. Now, this is a storm prediction center. This is Day one right here again shouldn't be a surprise what we just looked at and then day two this kicks off to the east now taking a look at the wider view of things hawaiian islands bottom left artificial intelligence as of last night there's pacific northwest this is the frontal system impacting the region as we speak so that's swinging through and then we build that ridge and then we're going to kick this offshore flow and a very warm day coming here on tuesday if you miss summertime already you're going to get some very warm temperatures across the region just for one day before we cool things back down on wednesday as you see this next week system approach, it'll kick that flow at least a little bit back on shore before we bring another kind of a ridge building here as well. So we may warm back up a little bit here again as we're going through the mid portion of September. But after that, things look like they may start to change. Gulf of Alaska troughing here starts to get going. You can see the zonal flow pushing towards the Pacific Northwest and some deeper systems and some bigger storms start to approach the coastline as we go through fantasy land. Just something to be watching here over the next few days. We're not going to get into too much detail about that just yet but i will show you some of the potential with it here more in a moment now looking at 925 millibar winds you can see we're on shore right now and we've got clouds across the region thunderstorms east of the cascades you can also see as we go through this evening look at that Westerlies coming down the Strait of Juan de Fuca through the Chehalis Gap, meeting on the leeward side of the Olympic Mountains there, convergent zone activity for some of western Washington. Again, kind of an isolated band in areas south and north of that band are not going to be picking up near as much as if you were underneath it. And you can kind of see some of the gusty winds coming out of the west across the Cascades, which is going to be going through a big change as we go on in through Monday. You see, we start to slightly turn things offshore out of the northeast. Next frontal system will be decaying out over the open water and then we turn things offshore as we go through Monday night, very early Tuesday morning. Look at these winds starting to rip back out of the east through the Stampede Gap. Stevens Pass Gap, Columbia, Columbia River Gorge, Gus, again, could be approaching 50 miles per hour for some locations. So you could get some tree damage with that. And then you can see 
fairly robust system, but it's fairly far away as we go on in through the day on Tuesday. And then we wait to see what happens after that. And it doesn't show too much in the way of onshore flow, actually, as we go through some portions of the next week. You kind of see this ridge nosing up across the Pacific Northwest. So that may keep us, you know, with some nice seasonable temperatures out here. It also maybe allows some of this forest fire smoke to keep moving around the area. Now, if we take a look at the high resolution wrap, uh, not the high or not the rapid refresh, this is the North American model, but you'll see when the winds start to kick up. Here we go as we go through Monday night, right there is about 1 a.m. Tuesday morning. And then look at this on early Tuesday morning, these winds really starting to rip out of the east. So if you're going across uh, the Cascades, you know, Washington, Oregon on the day Tuesday for a hike or something, just be aware of these easterly winds. You could get some tree damage with that. Again, Stampede Gap, Stevens Pass Gap there, Columbia River Gorge there, are these you know, easterly facing conduits here, uh, across some of western Washington and for western Oregon, those could be introducing some of those gusty winds. It also shows some decent winds getting all the way out towards the coast for some of southwest Washington and northwest Oregon. Now, taking a look here at the six hour precipitation type, I just want to kind of drive on the point. Look at this. It's showing better precipitation than what is actually occurring right now across western Washington. You didn't see that on the Doppler radar. So the European overdoing that a bit for some of western Washington, but it does show the conversion zone coming through later. That is a better bet towards the Kings to Homosh County line there. You know, you're old pros at that if you've lived up there for any length of time. And then we scroll on in through the day on Monday, maybe another thunderstorm across northeast Washington, British Columbia and Idaho. They're off to the east. But yeah, it should be wrapping up as we go through the day on Monday. And then we dry out for a couple of days. And this next system here, not going to bring much precipitation as we go through the day Wednesday, but it will cool us down from our lofty temperatures that are coming on Tuesday. So now to the temperatures. Let's take a look here. Daily two meter max temperature. This is for today, Sunday. We bounced things back a little bit there on Monday for the region, but still not too warm overall. 87 for Medford, not bad. But look at what happens on Tuesday. You could be looking at some mid, maybe even a little bit warmer than this here for Seattle, Southwest BC, maybe Portland getting up towards 90 degrees. Warmer on the west side than the east side. That is because of that east compressional wind that will be going on on the day Tuesday. Look at this, some of Medford out there, 95 degrees. And again, cooler on the east side there. But then as we go through Wednesday, we're going to switch things up another warm day there east of the mountains but western washington western oregon definitely cooling down thursday friday saturday sunday you can kind of see we're still got some warmth there it's still gonna have a ridge around so we'll see just how much seattle will warm up versus portland there as we go towards the end of the week and on into the upcoming weekend now, a wider view of things here, a little bit of a look at the extent of forecast one more time. Artificial intelligence, there's our current rental system. Ridge with the offshore flows. We go through the day on Tuesday. We kick things back onshore at least a little bit on Wednesday, but then maybe kind of a, a little bit more of an offshore flow as we go towards the end of the week, warming us back up. But then the Gulf of Alaska trough really starts to take hold here as we go on in through um, possibly the, the end of next weekend and then you can kind of see that some of these storm systems could be fairly robust but they are off in fantasy land right now you don't want to get caught up in the details too much but Again, if I replay the end of that loop, you can kind of see the Gulf of Alaska trough is starting to look more like fall. Now, Seattle Tacoma International Airport, it does show some windy potential out here. Uh, it's nothing too extreme just yet, but we will keep watching this and just kind of see if there's anything out there in our future as far as windstorms are concerned. But until then, we're not looking at any major windstorms just yet. But we are watching this period for some stronger frontal systems as we go through the end of September. Quilly, Washington, of course, northwest Washington coast, you're getting closer to some of these storms approaching. And you can see it's starting to show some gusts up over 50 miles per hour in some of the individual ensemble runs here. So definitely something fun to watch over the next few days. And if we take a look here, I'll scroll through what happens on Tuesday. You can kind of see why the high pressure is on the interior portions there and that's what's going to kick those offshore winds across the areas you got the system moving up towards Haida Gwaii there in the Queen Charlottes and still the offshore flow continues through Tuesday but then we switch it up there again on the day Wednesday and we cool us back down and then this ridge is trying to get back up over the area as we go towards the end of next week and then the systems start to get a bit closer off into fantasy and this is a proper fall windstorm here if this was a bit further south but it's going to stay a bit further north according to last night's european and i mean look at that 974 millibar low this is very strong winds up here it would bring a decent frontal system across some of western bc and potentially down towards washington oregon just something to watch at this point and then you can see another strong storm off our coastline way off into fantasy we'll see what that one's going to do 
Now, artificial intelligence is kind of looking at what that would bring. If we go off into the extended, you can see some pretty decent frontal systems moving our way. But again, fantasy land for now. And uh, total precipitation in inches. I'll scroll through this really quick. You can see some of these storms really targeting portions of BC and Vancouver Island. And then there's that sharp cutoff as you get further south towards Seattle and Portland. Now, looking at the 46 day, you can see our very warm day on Tuesday right there. Then we drop back down. You can see the overall gradual downward trend as we move on in through the fall season and on through the end of October. Before you know it, we'll be to Halloween. Now, a uh, six to 10 day here, you got the above normal for the West Coast. You got the above normal signal as well. Eight to 14 day, also kind of a broad brush above normal as we get a bit more active in the end of the month. So anyway, you guys can probably tell I got a little bit of a cold here. Kids back to school, brought home some, some gunk there. And yep, I got it. It's kind of going through the house right now. So I uh, hope it doesn't sound too bad. But anyway, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know if it's raining at your house, what you saw, if you're getting some thunder on the Oregon coast, Eastern Oregon as well. Or if you're across Washington, wherever you may be, if you're getting some rainfall. But anyway, uh, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Hopefully you guys are having a good day, and I will talk to you guys then.